sideline in front of head coach Bill Packer in the Comet bench. He rips off close to 12 yards. Finally, Ben Schmidt, the safety, tracked him down. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds at the 38, but still enough to move the chains. And Ward, this offense of Penn's Manor, we mentioned, has given Homer center fits through the years. They come at you from all different angles, a lot of motion, a lot of jet sweeps, buck sweeps with the running backs. Uh, and some inside reverses I'm sure we'll see before too long. And so far, so good for Penn's Manor. Uh, the pressure's on the ends. The ends have got to get in and hold their ground. They can't allow him to get around the corner like that, dump, dip his shoulder and down the sidelines for 10. Split backs this time, and they hand it to Smoji. Makes a quick move. He's dragged down by Kobe Doherty off uh, on the far side of the field. But he got about 10 more up near the 48-yard line. They put it down at the 47, so it'll be second down and one. They're just getting 8, 9, 10, 12 yards at a time right now. They're, they've got Homer's defense guessing now. This is why you don't read. You attack. You cannot read this deep offense or you're going to be watching these guys run by you all night. You've got to get some penetration. Slow that down. Dimitri Lieb, wingman to the right, Hamilton to the, to the left, and uh, it's Lieb, and they hand it to the fullback, and Smoji plows for a first down. He plows into Homer Center territory for another first down. Something in watching some video, when they run that deep motion, generally the handoff's going to the fullback, and it did that time. Not all the time, but uh, quite a bit. High percentage, Justin Walbeck, Homer Center's leading tackler, only a freshman, made that tackle. Well, again, you know, the influence on the motion, the, the defense is watching all this stuff go on, and they're not occupying their spaces. you got to come up, cl close gaps, and rely on your teammates to cover their areas. From the 47 of the Wildcats, the give in motion uh, is Hamilton. Logan Williams has him. Hamilton gets three yards to the Wildcat 44-yard line. Hamilton getting up a little bit slowly, but he flips the ball to referee Lou Idzotic. Want to reach out the booth and say hello to our young Wildcat fan, Ian Graham, down there. <laughs> He's not paying any attention. <laughs> we'll try it again. There he is. Ian Graham's <laughs> looking up at the press box. <laughs> Grandma Vicki Smith down there. And Mom, hey, Ian, how we doing? Has his Wildcat jersey on. Second down and seven, motion man Hamilton. They give on a reverse, just as we talked about. And Lieb is bottled up and down he goes. He couldn't turn the corner. That play was blown up nicely by Homer Center. Deshaun Robinson made the tackle, but some initial penetration ward, I think, made the difference. It'll be third down and seven. I'll tell you what made the difference. If you saw 24 come down and stand there and turn that in, that's what made the difference. You don't lie them on the wing. They got to turn in. That's where your pursuit is, even what pursuit we have was there tonight. Third down and seven, ball at the 44 yard line. Our statistician is back in the house, Jerry oh, Ross. Jerry goodness. waved everybody out there in Radio Land. Our spotter in the booth is Denny Mester, who never takes a day off, unlike Jerry. And our executive producer of Wildcat Sports is Michael Burdick. Timeout on the field called by the Comets with 5.54 to play in the first quarter we're scoreless on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network 60 here there was some buffering early right is it okay is it pretty good now hmm? no Right, yeah, I don't, they're working through some issues, I think, so I'm not going to even tell them that. They allow me to mention it now. If you're confident enough, no, don't mention it. Okay. I blitz. Yes, send the hops. Out of the timeout, the comments will be facing a third down and seven. Here it comes. Oh, they threw it. It's in the back. As we come back, motion man Hamilton around the right end, inside the 40, makes a man miss, but there's a flag on the play. And he's tackled down near the 
37-yard line, but Ward, it looks like a hold. Yeah, we saw it here, Mark. I, 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 I'm not sure. I don't know if that was uh, Logan Williams. Yeah, it probably was from behind there. He was just about to grab the runner, and he got nailed. And that, that's a big break here. Homer had a pretty good, did a pretty good job of coming up on that. So they might have stopped that otherwise without the block there. But uh, the block sprung him for the first, had, had the first down. Nice job, though, uh, on a little more penetration. Now they, they really need to put pressure on the quarterback. He has not shown any ability to me to throw the ball, Mark. So let's get, let's force that out of him here. Trips to the left near the Penn's Manor bench, third and 20. And they give it up the middle, and Homer center not fooled at all. And there's a flag coming in as well. Smoji was swarmed by T.J. Taglietti and also Trevor Malacker, Justin Walbeck in there. It's in and the, it's in the backfield. I think it'd be some kind of motion, wouldn't you? Alignment problem. It was a late flag, though. It wasn't flown. At least I didn't see it thrown immediately. Illegal procedure on Penn's Manor, so they'll decline it. Well, with the help of penalties, the defense was able to stem the tide that time. Let's see if they can get their offense going. This is what I expected. <laughs> it's going to be a battle. Penn's Manor sends out the punt team, and the long snapper is Dimitri Lieb, the uh, sophomore, although it looks like Tommy Hamilton. Yeah, it is Hamilton that's going to center. I was given Lieb. Scratch that. The punter is Lieb. Logan Williams, the deep man, stands at his 22. Leib's kick is floating towards Logan's direction at the 28. Breaks one tackle and runs into a Comet, and he fumbled the football, and it's picked up by the Penns Manor Comets, and they have the turnover, Brandon Galantine. We're going to have a media timeout with 5.09 remaining in the first half. Penn's Manor going to have the ball at the 31-yard line of the Homer Center Wildcats. And we will come back with more after this scoreless game on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. What's up, Jer? 32-yard punt, 32-yard punt, two-yard return. Back with you at Memorial Field out of the media timeout. Penn's Manor going to start at the 31 yard line with 509 remaining. That's just a good tackle. Right in the bread basket, right underneath where he was carrying the ball, and he just popped loose. Player in there for the uh, Comets, Zach O'Neill. Wide out in motion is Lieb, and uh, Willie, uh, Hamilton. Hamilton has the football, and he breaks a couple of tackles and has a first down. Inside the 20 yard line, some not so good tackling. Let's put it that way. I was gonna use the word lousy. Well, they went to a wildcat formation that time. Just put Hamilton there, took the direct snap and off he went with the motion play. And they're blocking the ends well. The, the Cats, again, you've got to attack. Those corners have got to come up fast and, and file that blocking up, take it out so they can't make those turns. 12 yards, that's way too much. Travis Mock on the tackle, tied on the team with 12 tackles tied for second. Hamilton again from the Wildcat. 
Motion man is Lieb, and they hand it to Lieb around the left end. He has running room. Good block on Cyan. He tied him up, and Lieb inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. Toby Dockery was over there, Mark, and he shedded a, a blocker to make that play. Actually, Justin Walbeck credited with the tackle. Five yards. It'll be second down and five. 435 left in this scoreless first quarter, but the Comets are in the Alexander Development Strength Development Red Zone. That's have got to start shedding these blocks, get into the way of these runners. Receiver to the right is Galantine. And Hamilton fumbles the football on the direct snap from the Wildcat, and he gets it back, but he's going to lose two or three yards as there were two black jerseys converging on him, but he did well to get the uh, ball back. If you're an athlete that takes your training seriously, then work with someone who takes it just as seriously. Contact Alexander Strength Development of Indiana. Alexander Strength Development, South 6th Street in the UPS building. Check them out on Facebook at Alexander Strength Development in three short weeks. It's amazing what they've done with my broadcast partner, Ward Hilliard. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna go as far as chiseled yet, but man, you're it's, heading there. It's like a ghost. Galantine to the right. Hamilton gonna hand it off to Smoji, trying to get to the edge. They get one block, but Logan Williams has him and uh, he slips it, but he had help and they finish him off. Logan gonna get credit for half a tackle there. <laughs> And I'm not sure who came in to finish him off for Homer Center. Ben Schmidt and Travis Mock again. They put the football down just outside the 15-yard line. So it's going to be fourth down and about seven to go as we approach the three-minute mark of this scoreless first quarter. Yeah, he, he didn't make the tackle, but he stopped the run. He stopped the progress, and that allowed the pursuit to get there. And that's, that's the key. Do not allow them the clean turn upfield. Timeout on the field called by Penn's Manor. Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night continues from our ST Bank broadcast booth. ST Bank salutes all of the Heritage Conference athletes from the gridiron to the classroom. ST Bank scoreless, back with a big fourth down play for the Comets deep in Wildcat territory after this on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Okay, just one here, just one. Hey, uh, Mark, tell, a after one, Marion Center purchase line zero zero. Checking the out-of-town scoreboard after one quarter tonight. Purchase line in Marion Center, no score. <coughs> Interesting. <coughs> Coming back at you on a fourth down and seven. Leitner back at quarterback under center, and he's booting to his right, throwing downfield, and it's out of bounds. He might have caught it, but he's out of bounds, almost out of our view, and the Wildcats are going to take over. We'll step out briefly, scoreless, on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. No, no. We're short a man. Back with you, but Homer Center, we're going to take a quick break <laughs> because they didn't have enough folks on the field, and Coach Page isn't happy about it as he storms out to the offensive huddle. 2.47 left in the first quarter. Penn's man or nothing. Homer Center nothing on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Out of town scores real quickly, 6-0 Salzburg. And uh, Indiana leading Ringold 13-0. Oops, I'm talking to nobody. We're on break already. Blairsville, Blairsville 8. Blairsville 8, Salzburg 6. 8-6 Blairsville. And out at Salzburg tonight, Blairsville's come back, a touchdown and a two-point conversion. They now hold a 8-6 lead tonight at Salzburg. 
If they lose that game, they'll run Artley out of town. And Abby, probably. <laughs> No bumper. <laughs> Hand off up the middle to Logan Williams, dragged down by number 31, Jimmy Leitner. Back with you in the give up the middle as we come back to Logan Williams and not a lot going on. A gain of just a yard or two. Jimmy Leitner on the stop. Nick Schmidt, our sideline reporter, down on the uh, line there. Nick. What's going on uh, with the Wildcats? Penn's Manor defending it pretty well so far. Yeah, and uh, jumping back to Penn's Manor's offense real quick, a lot of what they're running is just mainly dives and sweeps, and Homer Center's starting to catch on to that, but you want to be careful here because that once you get used to the, that sweep action, they're going to start tossing it deep to Brandon Baird. They're a big guy. All right, Nick, thank you very much. Give off of left tackle to Logan Williams. A little more running room that time, but shy of a first down. Brandon Beard, that big defensive end, made the tackle, and Logan gets to about the 28-yard line, so it's going to be, or 23-yard line, I should say. It's third down and a solid two. Gain of five for Williams. And this is what they got to do, is if they're penetrating the ends, use the inside. Ben Schmidt, and now we have a flag from the line judge, and both teams have been rather sloppy in the penalty department. This might, uh, let's see who this is going to go against offside on Homer Center. Boy, that's bad. Penalties for these two teams entering the game. The Wildcats had committed 13 for 140 and purchase line, or yeah, purchase line, Penn's Manor wore 21 penalties for 188. That doesn't get it done. <laughs> and then th this one certainly isn't going to get it done. It's a bummer struggling right now to move the ball. Had a chance for an easy, not an easy, but a relatively easy three yards to get a first down. Now they got eight. Third down and eight, and they come out in a power eye. And Ben Schmidt going to go play action. He has Cyani wide open, but he doesn't see him, and now he's going to be sacked back inside the 15-yard line. Cyani was running free, and Ben just didn't spot him. It looked like the play was designed to come near side, and uh, Schmidt, again, faced with great pressure and the O-line really didn't give him a chance. Well, once again, you know, we, we talked about this, the uh, schemes that the Comets use. They, they look at tendencies, they look at weaknesses. I know Homer's pass blocking has not been good, and it showed it there. Snap from center taken by Kobe Doherty. Floating kick, Smoji fields it at the 48 of Homer center. Heads far sideline, gets by a couple of defenders on his feet at the 30. That's Hamilton. Or no, it is Smoji down the left sideline at the 10, the 5. Did he get into the end zone? He did. Touchdown, Samoji. 48-yard punt return. And he broke a couple of tackles along the way. And he gives Penn's Manor the lead 6 to nothing with 105 remaining in the first quarter. Well done by the senior Samoji. Well, Homer's kick coverage has been uh, kind of average throughout the course of the first two games. It's hard to make any kind of judgment. But that was just a nice run back by Samoji, well blocked. And once again, nobody touched him that I could see. Maybe one of you guys saw him, somebody at least tried to slow him down. Just a great run. Wildcats are down six zip. Penn's Manor does not have a place kicker. They've gone for two, and they've been successful six out of eight times this season. And they direct snap, rolling to his right is Leitner, throws back of the end zone, and it is caught for the two-point conversion. So they're now seven of nine, including three of four passing for two-pointers. And the teams come up filled. The Comets have the lead eight to nothing over Homer Center on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network on an Indiana Regional Medical Center high school sports night. Hold on. Go ahead, Jer. Back 
the Wildcats who return a kick is Deshaun Robinson, Kobe Doherty, and Logan Williams. You can run the bumper. With Ward Hilliard, our sideline reporter, Nick Schmidt. Mark Burdick back with you from our ST Bank broadcast booth from the gridiron to the classroom. ST Bank salutes all of our Heritage Conference athletes, and that was a good athletic play by Matt Samoji of Penn's Manor on the 48 yard punt return to give the Comets an 8 to nothing lead. Homer needs to look at rolling Ben Schmidt. Uh, they need to roll him out more. Kick from Baird, taken by Doherty at the 23, up the center of the field to the 35, and up near the 40-yard line where he's tackled on the play by Jay Kerlinski, a six-foot, 170-pound sophomore. So with 59 ticks on the first quarter clock being brought to you by friends of Jim Struzzi, the Wildcats will start in a little better operating position this time, but they haven't had much going on, Ward Hilliard. They have no consistency right now. They did try to run inside to kind of negate the uh, attempt like Penn's Manor, a successful attempt, I might add, of cornering up or, or coming up on the corners and, and forcing Homer in. So they're trying to run inside the tackles. The next move, I think, is to roll out Ben Schmidt. Offset eye, your nose straight eye, it looks like, behind Ben Schmidt, who's under his center, Dunn. Back to pass, throwing an out pattern. Doherty takes it, makes a move. Defender falls down. He's on his feet at the 50. Left sideline, 40 to the 30. Penn's Manor knocks him out of bounds at the 25, make it the 26-yard line. So that'll be a gain, 35 yards on the play. That's a simple pattern. That's about a seven-yard out. Very easy for Doherty to run. He had a three-yard cushion there. And Ben put it right on the numbers. It's a good pass for Ben to throw. Three-step drop, turn, throw. And that's how, that slows the rush down. Now, good play by the Wildcats. Four Thir down territory, Mark. 35 yards, and Schmidt going to turn and hand to the big fullback, Malacker, who plows ahead for three or four yards. Baird getting up a little bit slowly on his back. Also, Andrew Packer, the coach's son, Billy Packer. i got to clarify which Packer, right? <laughs> yeah. There's from a the of Packers on 26 that. to the 22, so we'll call it a gain of four. On that pass play, by the way, slipping down was the cornerback, Eric Keith, and that enabled Kobe to scoot down that left sideline. 18 seconds left in the quarter. Nice plan by Kobe to make the turn, and that threw Keith off. Split backs, and Ben's going to keep it this time. Comes near side Ryan, but Penn's Manor strings it out, and the flag comes in late. This one might be on Homer center. Thrown by the referee, Lou Idzotic, and that is the call, a hold on the Homer Center Wildcats, and Schmidt only got to the 20-yard line, as it was, again, a, a couple with seven seconds left in the quarter. Yeah, again, that was a short side run, so they either had to make or break on the on the initial fake, and uh, the comments did not bite entirely on it, so... Uh, Good job, but then to hold in behind, that always kills you. Let's check in with our Nick Schmidt down on the Wildcat sideline, see if he detected anything on that play. Well, what you just saw in the previous play was a great play by Kobe Doherty. He just caught a little out, made a move, and went down the sideline. And playing with him for a year, I know there's going to be a lot more of that as the year goes on. That's how you did it, right, Nick? Close to 16 All right. First quarter comes to a close. From Memorial Field in Homer City, from our ST Bank broadcast booth, we say thank you to friends of Jim Struzzi for sponsoring the first quarter. Comets owned it for the most part. It's Penn's Manor 8 and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Yeah, good. End of one, Indiana. Blairsville's up 14-6. Trav, Blairsville 14-6. End of the first. 
Watertown scoreboard once again at the end of one out of Salzburg tonight. The Bobcats leading the Trojans by a score of 14 to 6. 8 nothing. West Shemokin over Northern. In the uh, big matchup tonight, it's uh, West Shemokin leading Northern Cambria by a score of 8 to nothing. We've shifted sides, and uh, the Wildcats will be facing a second down and long. Ball's at the 33-yard line. Ball at the 33-yard line as we get ready for the second quarter. Ben Schmidt after the holding penalty. It's going to be second down and 17. Jacob Zeiler, receiver to the right boundary. Logan Williams in the backfield, but Schmidt fakes it to Williams. He's going to keep it. He scoots for some yardage, breaks a tackle at the 20. On his feet at the 15, and they knife him down inside the 10-yard line. That's going to be about 22 yards for Ben Schmidt. Mike Rizzo finally stopped him for the Penns Manor Comets, the weak side defensive end, but Ben was scooting pretty good there, Ward. Yeah, he did a nice job. A little fake that time. Got enough of a gap to get through that time, Mark, and that's... What makes him so tough as a runner? By the way, I <laughs> wife handed me a note that said hi to Dan Faker. I did say hi to Dan Faker in the player introductions. Maybe he wasn't listening at that time. So we'll say hi again to him. At the seven yard line of Penn's Manor, Schmidt with that run. First and goal Wildcats, they try to answer Penn's Manor's score and they give it to Williams. It bottled it up, he knifes it outside. He makes something out of nothing because there wasn't a lot of running room there. But he gained a couple to the Penns Manor five yard line. On the stop for the Penns Manor Comets, Matt Smoji. Smoji defensively the free safety. And he came up and made that tackle. So second down and goal from the five, one minute into this second quarter on an Indiana Regional Medical Center high school sports night. A little fake to Logan and a little quick out. Good work here for a score. We'll see what they do. Split backs. Actually, power eye formation. Toss right to Williams. Williams clogged up. He's going to reverse footing. He's got a lot of white jerseys to try to elude, and he can't do it. No running room. That worked last week against Purchase Line reversing, but uh, not that time. Making a fine defensive play for the Penns Manor Comets was the cornerback, Garrett Patterson, who stayed home. Logan improvised, but Penns Manor, they were disciplined work. That, that's one of the things we try to emphasize and how well they prepare. They don't chase. And, uh, you know, that would have worked against a lot of teams, but they did a nice job of staying home and uh, just took away anything Logan had. That was poorly blocked. He's, he's got to have a little more room than that. They lose five yards back to the 10-yard line, so it's third down and goal from the 10. Kobe Doherty, receiver up top on the Penns Manor side, which is the short side. Wildcats operate toward the south end zone. Empty set, twins to the right and flags all over the joint. And let's see. I'm going to guess that's a motion. It looks like delay of game. Oh, delay. Oh, my. That's on the sideline, I'm afraid to say. So it'll be third and goal from the 15-yard line. Logan Williams and Zyler receivers to the right. Empty backfield. Schmidt dumps it off. Incomplete. That could be grounding, and it is. So the Wildcats just shooting themselves in both feet, not just one foot. So that'll be fourth down after the mark off. Yeah, that's a loss of down and a penalty. That's just a you know, firehouse kind of rush. Everybody's coming. Ben doesn't have a chance to even pick a guy. It's intentional grounding against the Wildcats. So it'll be fourth down. So barring a bizarre turn of events here, it's at the 25-yard line. Or let's see where they're going to put it down at. It's five yards, I believe, isn't it? Yeah. They back it up to the 29. Just moments ago, Homer Center had a second and goal from the five. Well, this is heaving hope time. Well, you got the screen, but the comments aren't going to be fooled by that, so it's, it's going to be... <laughs> 
Yeah, heave and hope here, and I don't think he has time to heave, to tell you the truth. And now a timeout called by Homer Center. Greg Page is not a happy camper right now. On an Indiana Regional Medical Center high school sports night, 8 nothing Penn's Manor. They have owned the play in the first half, and you're listening to Homer Center Penn's Manor football on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Bring it back. Second quarter being brought to you by Diamond Medical Supply. Fourth and goal from the 29, and Schmidt rolls to his left, throwing deep downfield, and it's intercepted and then jarred free uh, by Kobe Doherty. And the interception was almost made by Eric Keith, which would have benefited Homer Center because he'd have been down at about the one-yard line. And maybe in fairness to Keith, that's why it was jarred. Yeah, he may have just uh, decided, oh, I don't want to catch this and dropped it. Uh, I don't know. He got popped pretty good by Kobe. But uh, it has set them up in reasonably good field position after the Homer's uh, initial drive. Wildcats are just too inconsistent, Mark. They've got to find some kind of formation they're comfortable with offensively that they think they can get some positive yardage and stick with it. From the 29-yard line, split backs behind Jimmy Leitner. And the give to the deep back. And with the football, Samoji is upended by Doherty, but not before he gets five yards up to the 34-yard line. 8-0 Penn's Manor here from Memorial Field on a beautiful night in early September. I tell you, you get a young team, this kind of offense would give them fits because they're trying to follow the, the, the ball. They're trying to follow these runners. The gaps are there. Nice hole there opened up on that because you got to respect the, the wings of holding them up and forcing that play wide. That is what this defense needs to do. The interesting game, though, Mark. You could see both staffs adjusting to what the other is doing, and and with success in some cases, and not so much in others. But you can see there's a lot of adjustments going on here because these teams are playing each other pretty tough. Homer Center takes the penalty ward. I think head coach Greg Page thinking on a fourth and a yard or two, maybe you know, yeah. though Comets are in their own territory, they may go for it. And the way the Wildcats have yielded rushing yardage, why wouldn't Penn's Manor, might be, right? That might, might be good thinking. So they back them up. They take the penalty. It's to the 25-yard line. They need to get to the 39 for a first down. So my math says third down and about 14 to go for a first down. Inside of nine minutes left in this first half with Penn's Manor, thanks to the Samoji punt return leading eight to nothing. Rolling to his right, Leitner. He wants to throw. He's being pressured, and they can't get him. He throws underneath, has a receiver short of the sticks. It is completed up over the 30-yard line to about the 32. Travis Mock over there for a homer center, but Penn's Manor will have to punt it away. They're going to be faced with fourth down and about eight to go. Tough play for Leitner. He's a converted lineman there. They'll roll out. Took a lot of time. Made a nice pass. We'll give him that. But the, it's difficult for him to get enough on a deep pass, and that's what you're really looking for there. And Wildcats, to their credit, had that pretty well covered. So the holding penalty definitely hurts the Comets. They go three and out. Both teams have been hurt by penalties. Snap from center, good, and they're going to run it. And Penn's Manor breaks a tackle, but not enough for a first down. I'll tell you what, got by Tagliati and uh, also Homer Center's Owen Cochran, but who made that tackle, Dennis Mester? Because if not for the third guy, it is a first down, but the gamble 
uh, backfires on Penn's Manor. Alex Pribish made a first down saving tackle. You know, I watched some of the, I was just going to say it, I didn't want to step on you there, that they were, you know, they're ripe for a fake because the Hummers' defense was kind of walking up to the line they were expecting punt. And good thing Pribish had enough smarts to hang around and make that play. So the Wildcats take advantage here. Let's see if they can score. From the Penn's Manor 36. Snap from center, quick handoff to Williams. Williams threw an opening to the 25, to the 20. He's going to take it right to Mrs. Ranoski's house for a touchdown. The Logan Williams Express is back. 36 yards for a touchdown. As they blow the horn here at Memorial Field, it's 8-6 Penn's Manor, Williams, fifth of the season. I see our buddy Jimmy Sutter sitting down there. He likes that Williams Express term, doesn't he? And uh, that's exactly it. They got him a gap. Did you see the difference? He got clear of the first line and was gone. They can't, you're not going to catch him if he gets open like that. And Billy knows that. That was just a breakdown on their part. Wildcats, Wildcats will. Two, aren't they? Yeah, they're going to go for two. Receiver to the left, Kobe Dockerty. Twins to the right and Jake Ciani, who caught a two-point conversion pass last week. Logan Williams, sidecar to the left of Ben Schmidt. Back to pass. Ben's going to keep it. Ben has an easy trip to the end zone for the two-point conversion around the left end. He stepped up. He saw nothing but green grass. And we are tied at eight apiece. Logan Williams, that was fast. One play, 36 yards, 8-8 on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night with 8.24 to play in the first quarter. And you're listening to it right here on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Ben Schmidt, line drive kick taken by Dimitri Lieber on the right end, and he fumbles the football. It might go out of bounds on the far side of the field. Let's see. I think it did at about the 35-yard line as somebody popped him, and for the Homer Center Wildcats, that somebody was Owen Cochran. Let's get on to the sideline to our Nick Schmidt. Let's see what Nick has cooked up for us with the Wildcats answering Penn's Manor. Nick, risky uh, fake punt didn't work for Penn's Manor. Well, with Logan Williams' speed, you want to try to get that speed to the outside, but Penn's Manor did a good job stopping that, so what their response is going to be, give it up the middle, and that worked out perfectly for them as he got a touchdown, because on film they're studying, they're just uh, thinking stop the outside run, and so the inside run was there that time, and I think they're going to stick with that. Thanks, Nick. Jimmy Leitner under center, split backs behind him. And Leitner going to give to Dimitri Lieb, and Homer Center defends it nicely. T.J. Tagliotti, Travis Mock one more time, Alex Pribish. Ward, Billy Packer, before we started the interview, had so much praise for T.J. Tagliotti, the lineman of the year last year, and Alex Pribish. He said, I am so impressed with those two watching the film. I bet when he watches that play, he'll be even more impressed as they uh, hold him to no gain. Yeah, you know, the run, the two big plays that Nick Schmidt ran were left, and that's the side Tagliati's on. I just told Denny, I said, they've got something over there because they blew holes in that side both times. Tight end to the left for Penn's Manor's Baird. Lieb, they're going to give on an inside handoff, and with the football, Tommy Hamilton tackled maybe for a one-yard loss as busting that up was Trevor Malacker. 
of the Homer Center Wildcats. And Trevor has that push, Ward. Uh, I like the move defensively, really, to move him to a D end. <laughs> He's a load, isn't he? There's a lot to push out of there, and you know, that's his drop. You stick a foot in the ground there, nobody gets by me. And if they're going to go around me, they got to go way around. So that's, that's the thinking. But I see the homer D a little more aggressive now. It's a little more penetration rather than sitting back. And they're having some success as a result. 8-8 eight, eight our score. Penn's Manor third down and 10, we'll call it, from their own 34-yard line. Motion man Lieb, they hand it to Lieb. Lieb comes near sideline. Kobe Doherty fights off a block and makes a textbook tackle at the 39-yard line. He does get five. I'll tell you what, Kobe made that look easy, and it was far from easy. And I'm not sure what the adjustment was. It may have been just an adjustment for the coaching staff saying get rid of some people, you know, that they're taking on blocks and riding them instead of shedding them. This time, Homer had penetration each time. They were getting rid of their blocks. Tommy Hamilton, the long snapper. Dimitri Lieb, the sophomore punter, stands at his own 27-yard line. And the snap from center is true. He gets the kick away. It's high and very, very short. Deshaun Robinson calls for a fair catch at the 40-yard line. So a punt of 21 yards. Boy, that, that's smart football. We got to get a media here. Yeah, Deshaun Robinson, he gets a star in my book for fair catching. <laughs> End of the discussion here. I want to get us time to get out of the way. No, no media timeout oh, yet because we're not under six minutes oh, I see. if you go by the letter of the law. So Homer Center going to take over at their own 40. Blairsville leading Salzburg 22-6 with 4.01 left in the second quarter. Burkhart, the quarterback, a four-yard run. Yeah, a little bit of a surprise there. Split backs and Ben Schmidt back to pass. Out pattern has Kobe Doherty at 47. Makes a quick move. Penn's Manor territory at the 40. Five to the 40-yard line where he's tackled from behind. On the tackle, Brandon Beard. The big defensive end at 6'5", 205. But, boy, Kogi, Kobe more moves than Ward Hilliard on Main Street at 2 in the morning. And it is first and goal, Homer Center. I'm not sure what that means, but I'll say one thing. He got a lot of cushion. He went down about seven, turned, bam, ball was right there, and then he made a move. At the D-back still hadn't come up on him. That's the old button hook kind of pass there. Nice job by Nick, uh, right on the money. 20-yard gain to Kobe. And Schmidt toss left to Williams. Outside bounces it, and out of bounds he goes. After a three-yard gain, he took what was there and picks up three with 5.27. Clock stopped here in the first half. Tied at eight. We expected a good one. We're getting a good one. They called Ben Nick again. That's going to happen a lot more. <laughs> gain of two. They were going to say he stepped out of bounds on the Penn's Manor bench at the 38-yard line. Ben Schmidt getting the play call from head coach Greg Page on this beautiful night. Alumni, alumni night, easy yeah. for me to say at Memorial I'm Field. I saw a lot of band members down there that showed up. It's great. Great tradition here. Power eye formation. Justin Walbeck in the backfield and they're going to give to Williams. Clogged up up the middle and Logan fights for a yard maybe to the 37 yard line but the Wildcats are going to be faced with third down and seven. They send in some new troops. Travis Mock and Jacob Zeiler in and Trevor Malacker and Justin Walbeck come out. That was the power eye counter, the, one of their favorite plays last year. They just do not have the size in that backfield they had last year to kind of blow those holes open. And uh, Columbus did a nice job of stuffing it. Thought a screen pass on that down might have worked. Men's Manor's been coming pretty hard. Might have got out of position. Mock and Cyani split to the wide side toward the homer center bench. And Ben Schmidt back to pass, pump fake. Now where's he at? Rolls to his left, throws downfield, has a receiver, Doherty at the 20. And makes a quick move on his feet at the 15. He's going to take it to the house down the left sideline. 38 yards from Schmidt to Doherty. His second touchdown reception in as many weeks. And the Wildcats, as they blow the horn again, have the lead 14-8 with 4.33 remaining in the first half. Well done. I didn't know how Ben got it free over there. Looked like they had him hemmed in. I didn't know where he was at. As you commented, Mark, when we saw him all of a sudden, 
Kobe, to his credit, I wouldn't call him critical about this. Scramble drills, you got to find a gap. Find somewhere for your quarterback to throw it, and he did that time. Wildcats going to kick out of placement here. And the long snapper, Tyler Sprankle, at practice Monday, I uh, attended on Labor Day, and Coach Page said to Sprankle, we need those snaps back there quicker. I want you working on it all week. Doherty, the holder, let's see how he does. Snap is back there quickly, put down by Kobe, and Ben Schmidt has the extra point. Schmidt, this season, six of seven, now make it seven of eight. Speaking of eight, the Comets are stuck on eight. The Wildcats have answered with 15 straight on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night. It's now Homer Center 15 and the Penns Manor Comets 8 on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. That'd be all right, yeah. All right, if you just want to one run, want to run one, that's fine. What's that? They're taking immediate timeout now, so you go ahead and run extended. Yeah, run the fake log. Coming back after this. Yep. Yeah, you can run it. Yep. Well, Ben Schmidt, who had a big uh, part of that touchdown drive, has it teed up, and it's a line drive. Squibb takes a big hop and another big hop, and it goes through Hamilton's legs at the 20. Pick up that loose pill. He fumbles it, picks it up again, and the Wildcats swarm him back near the 10-yard line. That was one crazy football. <laughs> Check the inflation on that thing. Ever play croquet? Did that come out of Boston? That's, that's the way that baby went. It went through, under, around, and everybody, and then through the last guy's legs, and Hamilton lost control of it. He oh, couldn't see it clearly. It's so frustrating. It had all kinds of English and crazy hops. Nick Schmidt had a good view of it. Nick, uh, you hated when those kind of kicks came back to you, didn't you? Don't, uh, you hated it, right? Yeah, those were a pain in the rear to handle, and <laughs> as you it was a very hard ball to handle. All right, sideline report from former Wildcat Nick Schmidt. Penn's Manor at their own 10-yard line. Leitner takes the direct snap. Or it's Hamilton from the Wildcat, and he spins over the 15 to the 16-yard line and punches them out of a hole a little bit. So we've seen that a couple of times uh, tonight as Hamilton takes the direct snap, tackled on the play by Kobe Doherty, who's doing it on both sides of the ball. They made an adjustment there, and I'm kind of surprised they did. They were having success on those jet sweeps, and they kind of dropped out of that. Uh, Hamilton running those plays well, too, but uh, he is a threat any time back there, and uh, that's probably one of their reasons for trying to make the adjustment. Second down. And about five to go, a short five. Receiver to the right for Penn's Manor is Zach O'Neill, but they're coming left. And upended is Dimitri Lieb, the sophomore. But he has a first down over the 20, up near the 23-yard line. Defensively for Homer Center, Kobe Doherty making that tackle. Three and a half minutes left in this first half. Homer Center has responded with 15 straight 
and they lead Penn's Manor 15 to eight. On the road next week, we'll be on the hill at Marion uh -huh. Center. The Heidi Bull. We see Heidi up there every time we go. O'Neill and Galantine, receivers to the right. Look like early motion uh, or movement, but nothing called it, and the quarterback is wishing he didn't have the ball. And let's see if that's Jimmy Leitner. But no, it was Hamilton again with that football. And defensively, T.J. Tagliotti making that tackle. No gain on the play, so it'll be second down and 10 to go from the 23-yard line. Looked like they were trying to run a cross block and a trap out of it, and uh, it just seemed like all the assignments were blown. Hamilton had nowhere to go. Homer Center with one timeout remaining. Penn's Manor, I think, with two. Wings both ways, and Leitner back in there at quarterback, and he gives to Lieb as they bring him and to the left end. He turns the corner, gets over the 25, up to about the 27-yard line. On the stop for the Homer Center Wildcats, one more time, Kobe Doherty. They put it down at the 27. They need the 33 for a first down. So it'll be third down and about seven to go. Cats want to continue to force these third and longs. Uh, Comet's passing game I don't think is real strong, and they haven't shown that. So uh, they could come after them pretty hard here if it's a running play, bottle them up, force them to start using that passing Only game. through nine times in the first two weeks. Leitner was six of nine. Motion man Hamilton. They're going to give to Samoji up the gut. The Wildcats stop them shy of that lead stick. I do believe by about a yard. They needed the 33. They're going to put them down at the 32. And with 140 remaining in this first half, it's decision time for Coach Packer. No measurement, I don't believe. Nope. And it looks like Penn's Manor is going to go gonna, for it. I think he's going to go. He's a riverboat gambler. And they break huddle. And out over the footballs, Austin Yeager. Leitner under Jaeger, motion man, and they're going to give up the middle and fumbling the football, and I think the Wildcats have it. Samoji coughed it up. I don't think he got the first down, even if he didn't recover it. They unpile, and let's see what the officials say. And they say Homer center football. Second turnover on Penn's Manor. Alex Pribish came up with it. Uh, early, if you heard the... Uh keys to the game, but one of the things was that Penn's Manor needed to do just that, force turnovers. And uh, Homer's already had at least two that I can recall, with that one included. Hey, let's go to the old Jerry Page playbook here. This is generally a play fake and send the tight end deep. See if they can score right off the bat. This is one of the favorite plays the old Laurel Valley Rams used to use. Let's see if they do that. Jake Ciani in the ball game is on the left side tight. From the 32 of Penn's Manor, offset eye behind Ben Schmidt under center. Fakes to Williams, and he's in trouble as they pressure. Now he's going to throw, sideline out, caught by Doherty, and there's a flag coming in, and Greg Page is furious, and I think it might be a late hit on Penn's Manor against Schmidt, and Brandon Baird puts his arms up. That's what it was. Good call, Mark. Yeah, he, he got him out of the sidelines, just kind of railed him out. And the pass was complete. I think Kobe kept his feet in bounds near side. He did a nice job of holding his feet in bounds. Did have Cyani deep, but there was no chance for Ben to throw that down there. He had, he had scrambled for his life there. Completed pass for seven yards. Seven yards was the completion. To the 25, and then they'll go half the distance, right? What a swing here, huh? You know, you, you second guess, and I'm sure Billy's going to have people second guess him the whole time and what, what if he didn't go, but right now they've put Homer in excellent scoring position, and they still got a minute. Wildcats are in the Alexander Strength Development Red Zone at the 13-yard line of the Comets. Twins to the right, Cyani and Travis Mock. Twins to the left, wide splits here as they try to spread out Penn's Manor. Schmidt from the gun, going to hand it off to Williams. Breaks through and fights for yardage down near the 10. Almost got by that final defender. And if he does, it's probably six points. Hey, when Steeler kicker Chris Boswell and former IUP basketball stands out like Megan Smith and Blake Danielak can train at Alexander, why not you? Second and goal. Schmidt rolls to his left. Pressure coming from Hamilton. He has him, and he loses the ball, and it's picked up on a hop by Penn's Manor. And running down the right sideline to the 50-yard line, Logan Williams 
gets by Williams. He's on his feet at the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Goes Brandon Baird into the end zone as he picked up that fumble in front of the Comets bench. And he races 73 yards with 23 seconds on the clock. And what a turnaround in this football game. And it is now Homer Center 15 and the Penns Manor Comets 14. Wow, what a play by Brandon Baird. Well, the problem, Ben was trying to make a play. He had no play. He was rolling left. There's again one of my pet peeves of doing that. He tried to look to throw the ball. It looked like he was trying to throw it, Mark. But Baird was able to knock it away from him before he could get an arm motion, apparently, because there's no flags there. So, uh, obviously, great play by Baird. And, again, the pressure of the Comets has just given Ben fits. Uh, they got to start rolling to the right. Timeout, Penn's Manor here. From our S&T Bank broadcast booth, relationship banking one customer at a time. Wow, Brandon Baird, 73 yards on the return. Hey, let's keep everybody safe tonight, but when injuries occur on a Friday night, Indiana Regional Medical Center standing by, ready to help with their Saturday morning walk-in injury clinic. For the competitive student athlete, the weekend warrior, and everyone in between, sprains, strains, fractures, sports injuries, concussions, get fast An accurate diagnosis every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 12 noon, x-ray and physical therapy on site. Saturday morning injury clinic is open 8 a.m. to noon at the Human Motion Institute building on the campus of Indiana Regional Medical Center presented by the Indiana Regional Medical Center Physician Group the community's choice. What a turnaround, huh? Yes, Amazing. indeed. Amazing. Amazing. So Penn's Man are going to go for two, try to take the lead into the locker room at halftime. Homer Center will get the ball to start the second half. Leitner under center. The influence to the right, and they hand it to Hamilton. Cuts it up, and he's met, and uh, flag comes in behind the play. Didn't get in. And I think the penalty's on Penn's Manor, it is, so it'll be declined, and the Wildcats will hold on to a one-point lead. We're going to break, come back with the Penn's Manor kickoff on an IRMC High School sports night. Penn's Manor trailing Homer Center 15-14 to on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Wow, so a little by Brandon Baird and uh, two point conversion fails and we have a one point Homer Center lead at the half. Or, uh, not quite the half, quite, we're gonna have a uh, kickoff. Quite the understatement <laughs> in terms of events. Yeah, Homer's going down uh, potentially to take a two score lead into the locker room and uh, suddenly, Comets have uh, got within a point of them, uh, all on one play. And uh, you know, and I'm sure Billy Packer is quite relieved because they lost the ball going for the first down. So it's it's been a kind of a bizarre half. Uh, and uh, we said these teams are two evenly matched teams, and uh, they're making enough evenly matched mistakes here that are keeping this game quite interesting. That halftime talk. Ought to be inspiring, don't you think? Well, we'll have a comment from Nick Schmidt with head coach Greg Page coming up here in a couple of minutes. Good luck with that. <laughs> See what uh, Coach Page says to Nick. And Baird's kick high and short. Deshaun Robinson fumbles it, picks it up on a hop at the 23, and fights for yardage over the 30 to the 31 for Penn's Manor with 17 seconds on the scoreboard clock on the kick coverage team, Mike Rizzo, making the tackle. And uh, they put it down at the 32, so that's uh, where Homer Center might be uh, seeing them take a knee here. I would suggest that, uh, get off, regroup. Homer will get the ball to start the second half, so they just need to uh, 
shake the cobwebs out of their heads here because I'm sure they're all stunned over that turn, as you called it, and uh, they need to get in the locker room and talk about it. Wildcats, Schmidt going to go under his center, Tyler Dunn. And let's see if he just takes a knee. And that's what he'll do, and that's going to wrap up this first half with uh, final 12 seconds ticking down. Nick Schmidt going to catch up with Homer Center head coach Ben Schmidt as the Wild, or uh, Homer Center head coach uh, <laughs> Greg Page. Ben's his younger brother. And... We'll see what Coach Page has to say. I'm sure he's pretty disgusted with that turn of event there at yeah. the end of the first half. Nick, we'll send it down to you. And let's see if uh, Nick has the coach. I think he does. I'm here with Coach of the Wildcats, Homer Center head coach Greg Page. Coach, we'll start off by getting this out of the way. It looked like you were going to be up by a couple scores going into halftime, but big return by Brandon Baird. Thoughts on that? I mean, we just we got to we got to be able to protect, and we got to be able to get rid of the football, and then run a kid down. I mean, there we were, trying to lead, and we let him right back in the game. I mean, it's it's inexcusable. Now, for the second week in a row, you've edged your opponent at halftime. Is there any positive you can bring out of this half with you? We're winning by one. That's all right. That's about the only positive right now. All right, thanks, coach. Yep. All right, you heard it from Coach Greg Page. A little bit of positive, but not too happy going into halftime. Yep, Mark? Yeah, yeah. A lot to be happy and upset about all, I'd say, both sidelines. Ward, really, uh, Coach Packer probably feeling much the same way. He's probably very, as I said, relieved. Uh, and, you know, that's the worst job in football right down there, what Nick just did, because I did that for a long time. And these coaches are not happy going in. They were trying to form their thoughts, and we're sticking a mic in their face. But uh, it's all part of the game. Yeah, it, they are both fortunate. There's some major adjustments both are going to have to make and try to come out. Not a lot of consistency either side. They both seem to be trying all kinds of things, Mark, and uh, it's a mark of a game that, uh, you know, is pretty much a toss-up. We're going to come back when we kick off our halftime report with some radio replays. We'll recap the first half of action for you with Homer Center leading at 15-14 to 14 over the Penns Manor Comets from our S&T Bank broadcast booth from the gridiron to the classroom, S&T Bank. Salutes all of the athletes at Penn's Manor and Homer Center and across the Heritage Conference. S&T Bank member FDIC. 15-14 Wildcats in the 61st renewal of this rivalry between the two squads. We're coming back with the halftime show after this on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. And I'm at 10%. Certified. Here is Carry On, My Wayward Son. Okay, good, my short Jesus. Greg Hammer heading down to the field right now. D has that. That's who you're talking to is D. We have one bar left of power on the sling, uh, sling studio camera right now.
strength development. They work with athletes of all ages in all sports, youth, high school, college, and pro, like Steelers kicker Chris Boswell. Alexander Strength Development of Indiana, South 6th Street in the UPS building. Check them out on Facebook at Alexander Strength Development. Well, let's recap this first half for you. Penn's Manor after the Wildcats won the toss and deferred. Uh, started a drive at their own 37-yard line. And Logan Williams, who had a star performance on the offensive side, started things out for Homer Center defensively with a deflected interception that he had lost into the hands of Smoji. Smoji lost it back to Williams, who had the INT, but Penn's Manor's defense bailed out the offense as the Wildcats went three and out, got a 38-yard punt from Kobe Doherty. Penn's Manor took over at their own 15-yard line, 12 plays uh, or 12 yards on first down by Tommy Hamilton to the 27-yard line, but they had some issues, a holding penalty, and the drive uh, stalled. He got a 32-yard punt from Dimitri Lieb. It was fumbled by Logan Williams, recovered by Brandon Gallantine. Penn's Manor at the Homer Center, 31. This time it was the Wildcat D that bailed out uh, their teammate Logan, stopped Penn's Manor at the 15-yard line. Homer Center for the second possession in a row. They went uh, uh, three and out, uh, stalling. And they had to punt it away. Kobe Doherty went back to punt, and Penn's Manor got on the board after uh, Do uh, Doherty punted the football. Yeah, it certainly was, and then well done on the two-point conversion. Jimmy Leitner found Tommy Hamilton deep in the right uh, part of the end zone, and a two-point conversion made it eight to nothing at that point. Wildcats came back and uh, got a 35-yard pass play from Ben Schmidt to Kobe Doherty to Penn's Manor's 26-yard line, then a 26-yard gain by the quarterback Ben Schmidt to Penn's Manor's seven, but then a holding penalty followed by an intentional grounding penalty all of a sudden, after second and goal at the five, the Wildcats had fourth and goal from Penn's Manor's 29, and an incomplete pass on fourth down turned it over. Penn's Manor, holding penalty hurt them. They went three and out. A fake punt backfired. Was a turning point in the first half, one of the turning points that uh, kind of swung the momentum Homer Center's favor. Lieb was tackled by Alex Pribish, so Homer Center started at the Penn's Manor 36-yard line. It didn't take them long to pull within two points. Schmidt added the two-point conversion on the uh, quarterback keeper, and we were tied at eight. Penn's Manor, three and out. Homer Center's defense came up big. Wildcats then started at their own 40, got a 20-yard pass from Schmidt to Kobe Doherty to the Comets 40. Third down and eight, Schmidt uh, found Kobe Doherty one more time. This one went to the house. Yeah, it was. It wasn't Mrs. Ronoski's house, but it was her neighbor, and it was still counted for six points to make it 15 to 8 after Ben Schmidt added the extra point. Four play, 60 yard drive that took 94 seconds. Penn's Manor started at their 10 yard line after a squib kick took all kind of crazy bounces. Smoji uh, then 
fumbled the football as they punched it out a little bit to the 32-yard line. It was recovered by Alex Pribish with 1-10 remaining. And it looked like, wow, Wildcats might take a two-touchdown lead into the locker room. A completed pass to Doherty for seven year, uh, yards to the Penns Manor 25. Addy roughing the passer penalty on Penns Manor, took it to the 13-yard line. But second and nine, listen to this crazy play that tilted old Mo back in Penns Manor's favor. Yeah, it certainly was, and Tommy Hamilton was stopped on the two-point conversion. There was a penalty anyway, but the Wildcats obviously declined. Homer Center got the ball back, took a knee, and felt fortunate, as it turned out, to head into the locker room with a one-point lead. 15-14, to 14, our halftime show continues with Ward Hilliard and the stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Time to be first. Coming back to Memorial Field as the Homer Center marching band takes to the field on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School sports night on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Here's Bill Jr. 